guys, welcome back. My name is Jessica, I'm the Frey Family Coach. If you are new here, thank you so much for being here. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. So if you are new, if you look right down there at that subscribe button, if it's red, that means you need to click it and turn it gray. If at any point during this video you like the content, make sure to give it a thumbs up. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the tricks that pet food manufacturers are pulling on you as a pet parent, because they are pulling a lot of tricks on us pet parents. And I was very, very much fooled by them for a very, very long time. So this is in no way to say that like, I know something you don't know, but um, you know what? I learned knowledge is power. And that is the point of this video. So make sure at the end of this video, you do check the link that I put in the description under links, um, links for this video. It's going to link to an article that Dr. Karen Becker wrote. It's up on the Healthy Pets website. And so she saw an article in a, um, I guess it was a pet professional journal. And it was basically talking about how you can do even more to trick pet parents into buying your product. So pet food manufacturers are very much aware that pet parents are looking for foods that mimic their own preferences and foods. So very like artisanal foods and um, homemade foods and like small bat small batch foods or farm to table or so they're very much looking to feed their pets in the same way um, that they are eating. Uh, what you know the trends <laughs> in eating these days and instead of providing that food for our pets, they are just changing wording on the bags and taking different pictures and using different, um, different tricks to make you feel like you're feeding your pet a better diet when in fact you're not. So let's talk a little bit about that in this video. So the majority of commercially available foods especially, you know, these big name brand companies, therapeutic foods, veterinary foods, uh, or, or prescription foods, they're all made with a rendering process. And as they go through this extruder, is what it's called, the machines that they use, they can very easily manipulate the shapes and textures of the end product to look and feel more artisanal, more handmade, more small batch, when in fact, that's not what's actually happening. So I'll put a screenshot up on the screen right now. Dr. Becker says, renders annually convert 47 billion pounds or more of raw animal materials into approximately 18 billion pounds of products. Sources for these materials include meat slaughtering and processing plants, the primary one, dead animals from farms, ranches, feedlots, marketing barns, animal shelters, and other facilities, and fats, grease, and other food waste from restaurants and stores. So I know I've talked in quite a few videos about the meat products that these companies actually use and the lack of quality in these products. So I definitely don't want to leave that out of this video, but I don't want to go too into detail because I've talked about it a lot before on this channel. Um, but the quality of ingredients, especially the meat ingredients that are used to make pet foods is abysmal, uh, to say the least. And it's only going to get worse right now considering the new head of the USDA is Mr. Monsanto himself. That's not his real name, but he is the head of Monsanto. And uh, we all know, I think, I hope, how detrimental um, Monsanto's policies are to us as a population, to our country in general, to the trajectory of uh, farming, period. <laughs> so it doesn't seem like it's going to be getting better on the USDA front, but let's go back to this article that Dr. Becker wrote. So she says, the rendering process involves combining the raw product described above in huge containers and grinding the mixture down to chips or shreds. The mixture is then cooked at 220 degrees to 270 degrees Fahrenheit for up to an hour, which separates the meat from the bone. 
The grease, also called tallow, rises to the top, is skimmed off the mixture, and often becomes the mystery animal fat, frequently found on pet food ingredient labels. The remaining product is put in a press that squeezes out all the moisture and pulverizes the material into a powder. Shaker screens are used to separate excess hair and large bone chips from the powder. The result is meat and bone meal added to pet food formulas. Um, so the nutrient loss, so let's talk about what happens then to that final product has little to no nutritional value left in it. There's, uh, because of the high heat processing, um, because it is basically, you're best, basically left with like the sawdust um, consistent like this consistency in a powder form, there is a little to no nutritional value left in this. And as Dr. Becker says in this um, blog that she wrote, the end result is a fast food that is devoid of beneficial whole food constituents found in unadulterated raw food. What has been added to the food are several unwanted and very unhealthy processing byproducts. So as she says in the blog, the question really is, do you really want to be duped into buying this product that these manufacturers are making you feel like you're getting a higher quality product when in fact you're still getting the same low quality product? It just looks a little bit, it, they may have changed the coloring, they may have changed the texture, they more than likely changed the pictures on the bag, maybe even some of the wording on the bag, but you're really getting the same end product. So do you really want to be duped into buying that and probably paying more for it? Um, in this blog post by Dr. Karen Becker, she continues to go on talking about, you know, how pets over the last, you know, five, six decades have progressively gotten sicker and sicker and sicker because they're being force fed, basically, because they have no other option. A convenience food, it's convenient for us not very convenient for them because they are getting sicker and sicker and sicker every generation. Right now, the vast majority of these commercial pet food companies serve one purpose and that is convenience. It is not for your pet to thrive. It is not to provide you and your pet with the best food possible. Literally, the only purpose they are serving is convenience. So again, going back to the blog post, Dr. Becker says, instead of taking an honest look at how ultra processed diets might be contributing to the epidemic of health problems in companion animals, the biggest players in the pet food industry seem primarily focused on positioning products to hide their shortcomings, even as more and more consumers look to alternative diets to help their pets heal or stay healthy. It's really a shame guys, but that is what they're doing because it is profits over all else. Um, and then in the blog post, I'm going to take you back to it because she just does such an amazing job explaining, especially, I mean, some of the things you really need to be looking out for. So she talks a little bit about ingredient splitting and how these pet food manufacturers are actually turning corn into chicken on the label. So she says, perhaps one of the most egregious examples of how big pet food manipulates the reality of their product is through ingredient splitting. A bit of trickery used to make the ingredient label on a bag, can, or pouch of food more appealing to pet parents. Let's say we have a dog food that's primarily made with corn and rice, which is quite common in low quality, inexpensive brands. Corn and rice are significantly less nutritious for dogs than meats. Actually, they aren't even in the same ballpark, making them inferior ingredients. So she goes into, and I'm going to show on the screen here, before splitting, uh, what it's called ingredient splitting, which is the technical term that um, is used by pet food manufacturers. So before splitting, you have primarily 30% corn, 20% rice, and 18% chicken meal. After they split the ingredients, and you'll see here on the screen, you get 18% chicken meal, right, which is what you started with, but they split the corn into corn meal and corn flour so that they could give you 15% of each, which is less 
than the 18% chicken meal, but you're still getting 30% corn. They just split it up. And then you've got rice, which they have split into rice gluten and rice bran, which again gives you 10% of each, which shows even less than corn. So by ingredient splitting, what they're doing by ingredient splitting is showing that chicken is the number one ingredient when in fact corn, when you add them up, and rice, when you add them up, are more percentage-wise than the actual chicken in the product. So what do you do when you have completely lost trust in the commercial pet food industry, much like I have, much like many people have? Last I saw, and this was a couple of years ago, it was like 4% of the U.S. market is making their food at home for their pets or um, buying raw diets. They're not using these main commercial companies anymore. And while 4% doesn't seem like a lot, it really does hurt the bottom line of these commercial pet food companies. They don't like it one bit. So if you're in this sector of people who are waking up to what these pet food companies are doing, not just to us, but more importantly to our pets, right? Because they're the ones suffering then what can you do? So there are homemade diets that you can make. You can find commercially available balanced foods from smaller companies that are, you know, not part of these big pet food conglomerates. And of course, you know, there are some transparent pet food producers out there. So there may, they may be few and far between, but they are out there. Um, definitely check the link below to my Patreon because in my, once you join my Patreon, which Guys, if you haven't yet, I definitely recommend you do, not only to support me, but to get access to all of the exclusive content that is only available to you there. Um, I have links to so many wonderful resources about pet food and what companies I actually really do like, these tra transparent pet food companies, and how to go about properly making homemade diets, finding recipes that are fully balanced so you know that you're providing your pet with the best nutrition possible. So guys, I do hope this video helped shed light a little bit on a on, on this very problematic area. Um, I do hope it helped you. I hope it at least get you pointed in the right direction. Um, there are tons of other videos on my channel that talk about pet food and how to read a pet food label and um, how to feed your pet a balanced diet and I actually have an entire playlist that my husband and I did when we were transitioning our dogs to a raw food diet where like every day I was going through something new that I learned and I shared it with you so I definitely hope you check all of those videos out I hope this was helpful for you and that you go to the link in the description and check out the blog post from Dr. Karen Becker. I do also hope that you um, come join me and support me on Patreon. Not only will it help support this channel to continue to bring you content, but you also get exclusive content that you're not going to get anywhere else. So definitely check that out. The link is in the description. Thanks so much for being here with me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, YouTube makes a button for you. Too. Also, look down there at that subscribe button. If it's red, go ahead and click it and turn it gray. When that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for being here with me. And if you can't tell, I'm going a little loopy because I've been recording for a few hours now and yeah, getting loopy. Thank goodness this is my last video <laughs> for today, at least. But I'll see you in our next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.